Hey, Roger here from Roger's Hot Rod Garage. This is the 914 Porsche LS3 build. And what's on the agenda today for, I believe it's video number 27, here on the 2nd of December, 2023, is the door. Not the outside of the door, but the inside of the door. Notice there's nothing up in here. This is all empty. So the plan today is to take these doors that I got over here, the interior mechanisms, and just basically transfer them over to my new nice shiny doors that I had for probably about two years right now. So I got these about a month ago from literally pure chance. I ran to a guy at a car show. He said he had some 914 parts. I talked to him. He lives right up the road to yada, yada, yada from Seinfeld. Here we are later. So I'm going to take the guts out of here and move them over here. Now check this out. So these are pre-71 doors or 71 or 70 doors and the reason i know that now is they've got these tracks right here so there's a runner in here when you crank these things that actually move this window up and down see the mechanism up here the windows are in great shape they're a little bit dirty right now but i'm gonna clean those up but i'm just gonna take all these screws out and i've got them all soaking now i'm penetrating oil probably for the last two weeks and i'm gonna take all this you know the the, the molding on here the outside and take this and you push it out but i've got to get all those little bolts and everything out of here but i think that's not gonna be a problem again i pressure wash these got them sitting in here next to the oven and got them all drying out and move all that stuff over here so should be a simple project i don't like stuff like this because it's actually not fabrication it's just transferring of stuff and then over here put my door panels back up and i've had these now for i don't know probably about two months right now they've been sitting over there that's what one looks like over there but look I'm gonna stop talking right now, get the unbolting and moving stuff around. Hopefully there's not too much cussing going on. It is super, super cold outside. I think 15 Fahrenheit, 20 Fahrenheit, which is below freezing. And it's like minus six or seven if I got my calculations from metric over to, you know, between calculus and, uh, not calculus, but centigrade and Fahrenheit. But anyway, I'm not worried about it because the stove is a cooking hot. Look at that sound and heat. So I'm going to take this thing, close it down, choke off, and that way, man, this thing is hot. Nice little heat in here. But anyway, stay tuned. Let me get busy here, and I'll show you how I conclude this thing. So this little piece right here has to go up here, but you can see it right there. It's got to go down about a uh, quarter inch maybe. So my little trick for that is... Just a little bit of lubrication in the form of Windex. And then, grab your little handy dandy tool right here and let that stuff go down up in there. And it's just acting as a little lubricant. Probably should have done this earlier. Same thing on the inside right here because rubber on glass, if it's dry, that crap ain't gonna move apart it's friction so let me get this one right down here and then the same thing right down here and run that little plastic tool up against here as well now let me see if i can't actually get that sucker to go down a tad I think it moved a little bit down. So now this is this little piece, the end cap, if you will. It sits right up on here. Or, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So now, this thing is smooth. I've got a line right here. And down here, I actually saw my line. You see the line right down there? I don't know if it's hard to tell. That's where the previous seal was at. And I'm within uh, a millimeter of that. So I'm gonna call that gravy and golden for the day. All right, more fun. Just that window regulator. I'm sure there's probably the right and the wrong way to get it in there, but I can't figure that crap out. There we go. There we go. Just a little bit of flexibility. Here, 
there we go. All right, Booker's up in here. So this goes over here. And if you see that little piece right there on the corner, that little thing right there, it slips in that little rubber boot right down there and then you put a bolt on the other end of it. So that's the plan. I'm gonna try to get that sucker up in there. Now, just to get it close to mounted, see that in there. Never mind. Nothing like a little lubrication. Okay, that's in there. <laughs> oh, so I'm behind this little piece right here, so that's not the right way to do it. All right, got a smile on my face right now because this is in actually with the old gasket because it was in good condition. Cleaned it up a little bit. This piece right now fits down in there nice and tight because this glass has moved down about a quarter of an inch. Everything's lined up over here. That's perfect. I got my little prompt window roller up here. So check this out. It works actually effortlessly. My new word for the day. Nice and easy, up and down. And the main part about this build is, or this replacement is, there's no spare bolts left over. So that means I was successful and put everything back together as I took it apart. That's the passenger side door. I'll get that to probably tomorrow, I'll take care of that. The only thing I'm waiting on right now is the glass up here, the curved glass. I gotta sit on top of the Nomad here. Got a little bit of RTV and I had to glue this piece back on the corner right here. And this is actually what goes in the track and it goes back and forth. And the piece that guides it up here is literally this piece right here which is perfectly sitting in here and this little gap right here and this little piece that's missing right here is sitting right here that's that piece of aluminum that i have to figure out how i'm going to get out of here again those are the you can see the screws way up in here i'm going to probably just drill them out and then once i get this thing out i'll polish it and i'll put that window scraper in here i've got that actually brand new from 914rubber.com and also this piece right here, I have that brand new, and this felt on the inside right here. So just a matter of uh, dealing it. But the main thing is I figured out how to do one door, so it's like figuring out how to do the other side, so I'm not worried about it anymore. Speaker will go right here, plenty of room with this regulator back here. The tweeter for Mac Audio will go right here, and I'm gonna call it a day. All right, number two is coming out beautifully. Tell you what, that is a pain in the butt. There it goes right there. There it is. All right, one more to go. Project will be complete for tonight. All right, so this last one is giving me a hard time, but the problem here is you just gotta go back and forth. Keep going. Slowly, I'm gonna hit this one up here. <laughs> I won, so <laughs> this is not in the category of fun right here, but this one was actually fairly simple. I just gotta get that crud out the corner, and it's literally, it's rusted up in here but only got this one track to do right here. All right, that thing is good enough for government work. Cleaned it up with a wire wheel over there. Hey, uh, this is Roger here. Fast forward three weeks. I was out of country, had to go to a place called Atlanta, Georgia, Augusta, Savannah, Daytona Beach, down into a place called Florida. You might've heard of it. And now I'm back in Germany. But long story short is that gave me an opportunity to go to 914rubber.com and actually order these new vent window seals right here. I think these are like $20 a pop. Of course, I've got the left and the right side. And this is actually nothing wrong with this. It just looks a little bit glued in here. It was pretty good. I spent a little time cleaning it up, but I'll put this in the eBay for sale sign over here in Germany and somebody will enjoy that used part, but I'm gonna put new ones in mine. Long story short, I played along with uh, trying to get the Chevy fuzzies that I had left over from the Nomad right here to fit in these tracks right here. Boogered it all up. It's just worth a try. But anyway, these are the fuzzies right here, the outer window fuzzies from 914rubber.com. And as you can see, the shiny side goes up 
and they basically slip right in here and these were a pain in the butt to get out but i got them out got them cleaned up and then there's also a seal that goes into this outer track up here but anyway i've got all new parts new rubber this is all lubricated up the windows are out here clean protected i'll come over here and again three weeks later in the garage we got the 30th of december I've got this disassembled, but now since I've done this about four times right now, it's a pretty simple process right here. And then back in the meantime, also, Sven, my upholstery guy, well actually he's not my upholstery guy, he's the, the local upholstery guy, went ahead and finished up the top part of the 914 dashboard. So that's really, really cool. That's leather, and check out the cool little stitching he did on here. And then this piece right down here I did myself. These are old classic instrument gauges. I'm going to put those in here and keep this look clean. Obviously, no uh, joke of a glove compartment anymore because right behind here is going to be my vintage AC unit. Can't do with that. And if you notice right here, I've got what I call an ashtray delete. I took a block of wood, which you saw in the other videos, uh, bolted it and glued it up in here. And then he basically covered over top of that. But the dude does really, really cool work can't wait to get this in here but let me get back over here I, I know this is kind of hard to see right here but you see there's little lines up in here this is that little attention to detail we call it that uh, i'm going to polish out right now so when you put the new seal in there you'll almost be impossible you see that little line up in there where the old seal the dirt collected up in there you can use all the windex in the world but it won't get it out of here so the way i do this is i get myself some really really fine polishing paste or chalk and then you can get that little line off of there. Nothing wrong with using polisher to do this. And then what you do is get yourself a little bit of brake cleaner, put it on here, and then wipe it off of there clean. And you can see right now, I don't know if you can see it or not because the light's shining against it, you've got a super clean glass like the day it rolled out of the factory. All right, same trick, a little bit of soap, and then do the bottom up here. You don't want the piece that's got the glass in it going to the rubber. That's what you want nice and firm and not moving around. And then get that all lubed up. I've got this piece right here lubed up, and here's the plan. The plan is now to slide this sucker up in here without cussing too much when it goes this way. Where's the bottom of that thing? Hold on. Right there it is. Try not to do my Michael Jordan hang the tongue out. Nope, I didn't get it in there yet. There it is. Oh yeah. Love the internet guy just watch on this this is the way they did it in a factory back in 71 and it actually works i got a little bit of lubrication on there in the form of palm olive and that actually works check this out a little sawdust on there right now but it's actually sealed up in here so now i just gotta run this bolt in the back right here i can see it Pop that one in right there, see how it's a little bit high right there? And I'll be done. All right, perfect. There you go, that's that little back mount right here. I'll press in this front just a little bit more. Then, important that I had that screw down there right now. If you don't have it in there, you get to do the whole process again. Now I got this thing pretty well sealed. And remember when soap dries, it comes very, very sticky. So it's almost like like a glue up in there. It's not a glue, but it gets really, really sticky. So check this out. This is clean. This is bündig as a German saw. This is level up here. 
So that means I know my glass is in exactly the right spot. Looking pretty spiffy. All right, just tip number 852. Uh, these little fuzzies actually fell out, you know, after you slide them in here. So what it is, I put some RTV behind them and I'm also going to just put a little U-bend in here right now, not a little, but like a millimeter. And you can see right here what I'm doing. See how it's actually closing it up a little bit. And that's what I'm gonna to do to keep that thing from flying out of there. I'm almost done though. See? All right, hey, check this out. I'm gonna close this video out now. And uh, everything's kind of rearranged. This is the truck we're working on tomorrow, do the entire brake system on it. Got this thing moved to the other side, but what I wanna show you here is the interior. So no door handles in it right now, so I'll just use the windows to open it up here. But check this out. So this is what old girl looks like right now. Uh, got a little vacuum gauge over here. That's that classic interim stuff I was telling you about. And then that's the look I'm looking for. Nice, simple. Got my little six-speed uh, Boxster S2016 transmission. Seats are in it. This looks like a giant mess down here, but it's not. It's pretty simple. This is an easy wiring harness, a 12-circuit system. I got my... There it is right down there. There's my fuse panel. But anyway, long story short, got a lot of progress made today. These doggone things are in here. I just got to put this on here right now. And I do have to wait, hold on, for these right here. Those are my little fuzzies. Remember I showed you earlier, I glued these in here, put a little RTV on them, and then I'll put these in tomorrow and then run little screws right there where those little lines are at right there. And then what I'm going to do tonight, we've got about 7.15. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. I don't know if I'm going to actually do this right here with this little thing right here. I don't know. I got my instructions over here on where to mount the actual sensor right up in here, the mass air flow, mass air flow sensor. But I think I just might make it nice and simple right here, but I gotta check the book over here on where I can actually mount this thing. And it tells you exactly, it's gotta be on a 10 inch straight piece, but I've seen other folks, there it is right there. I've seen other folks actually mount it wherever so what does it say right here tube 10 inches from throttle body well shit i don't think i'm good to go minimum what does that say six inches straight shit i'm golden right now so that means hold on this is directional it's got a little concave on it that sucker's gonna go not right there but probably right here someplace to make sure i don't interfere with the hood that's the project for the, about the next hour, uh, and that's about it. So anyway, from, from Roger's Hot Rod Garage, take care. Uh, this is the little break part tomorrow. Now, we're not going to start drinking uh, the American Honey, Evans Williams Honey, and Jim Beam Honey until we get about three quarters through the project. But anyway, so take care from Roger's Hot Rod Garage. This is the Porsche Project 914 LS3, and uh, hope you enjoy it. Take care, subscribe, like, and share. Bye-bye. All right, here we go. That right there is where my bung is gonna go. That's this little piece right here. You gotta orientate it correctly. So uh, the little arrow on here, that arrow right there points towards the intake manifold. And let me get it right here. Great, like this. Pull this off of here. This right here will go right here. And I think that's a pretty good section right here. Arrow point in the right direction. Oh, 
actually ass backwards or back ass words that's how it goes right there so check this out nice and neat put a nice little tig weld around that in aluminum all right the final to the final closeout right here sorry about that folks but hey look this is what it looks over here i got it all polished up i'm going to put a little bit of uh, brace down here to stop this from happening right here it can move around a little bit and then this of course it's gonna be welded in, nice little tig weld around here, but look sharp. My idea about running it over here and down here, why? I've got six inches of straight section right here, and it's 10 inches away from the intake, the actual uh, throttle body is what the, uh, the instruction said. So I think it's pretty well a done deal right now. So I'll close out. Hey again, thanks for watching, bye-bye.